Hello. So in this lecture, we will continue our discussion on uh, single cycle CPU. In the last lecture, we discussed the notion of data path and control. We will continue our discussion on data path and control for various kinds of instruction uh, in this uh, video. So let's start with uh, the I format instructions where either one of your operand will be provided in the instruction itself or you kind of read register values and uh, do some arithmetic operation and put the data back in uh, one of the registers, right? So if, if you look at the data path for, for these two instructions, you will find that uh, during the decode, you are reading the registers. So you will see RS and RT for the, this particular uh, uh, instruction format. You are getting the data, populating it into the ALU, and the ALU is finally putting it back into a register called RD, which is actually your write register. And uh, this is the data path that we have discussed, which shows the data, right? So uh, the control here will be based on the functionality. So if you remember, we have uh, discussed about the utility of this particular field. So that will provide a control signal based on which the ALU will perform some operation. Uh, moving forward, if we go for a instruction that is uh, using immediate values, so then uh, we don't have an RD here because uh, there is no need for another register. And in fact, we are reading the data value directly from the instruction itself. The only thing that we need is uh, you need to make sure that it is sign extended to make sure uh, your data is fitting into your uh, data width uh, with the proper uh, sign bit so that uh, you won't uh, mess it up after performing the ALU operation. And then as usual, you are reading two registers, right? And then and, and, uh, performing the operation and uh, putting it back once it is done. So in this case, you are putting it back in uh, one of these registers, uh, in this case, RT, right? So uh, again, the logic for this particular uh, instruction will be given by the upcode field, right? Because now there is no functionality uh, field here, right? Okay, so if we move on to instructions that deals with memory, uh, meaning they actually load data from memory. So for example, let's take this instruction. So we are uh, going to memory based on the addresses provided by this register and this constant and we will store the data in this register so this is uh, the action that we will perform right so the first thing that we need is we need to get the address for which we need to uh, uh, go to the alu so alu will uh, perform the addition of uh, this particular constant and the content of this register and finally, it will provide an address, and based on that address, we can go to memory and uh, get the data, right? So, okay, so at this moment, in this slide, what we are showing is we have communicated the constant, okay? And uh, now we, we need to uh, make sure that once the memory operation is done, it should come back to the register file, right? So th this is what uh, is the location. So the beginning is we are reading something from a register and a constant and the final outcome will be we are writing something into the register, right? And in between, the memory will come into picture uh, because eventually we'll get the data from memory. So this is what it is. Uh, the address to the memory will be provided by the ALU. In the ALU, what it does, it actually takes the constant 32 and the content of this register. Uh, based on that, it will finally give you the address. Once you get the address, you go to data memory, fetch the data, and uh, return into the register file, right? So here also you can see there are a few uh, control signals that we are talking about. The first one is the ALU source, right? So now, now what we have done is we are either uh, taking a value directly or we are performing some operation 
right? So that will be uh, depend on this particular uh, control signal. Similarly, this particular control signal tells us that whatever data we get from the memory, it will be written into the register. Okay, so if this control signal is activated, that means we are going to perform a register write. Okay, and for that, we need a register destination. Okay, and at the register file, we need a register write control signal. So this is the write enable control signal. So the, these are the various control signals that helps us to, you know, uh, perform operations based on the data path. Right. For example, which uh, source to pick, uh, what operations to perform, where to write it back. Right. So these, these are the various uh, controls. Okay. So uh, as you have seen in the previous slide, so there are uh, various uh, control signals that can be generated. So if you remember, the control signals are generated by the upper six bits, the upcode. Based on the upcode, uh, there will be a control uh, signal generator that will uh, generate uh, the following control signals. And depending on the control signals, your data path will behave differently. Right? So uh, as you have seen in the previous slide, uh, whether you are writing into a register or you are reading into a memory, uh, writing into a memory and all, right? So let, let's quickly look at uh, the branch instruction, uh, how exactly things change here. So in the branch instruction, everything remains the same except uh, depending on the condition, the branch outcome, the PC may jump to the next instruction or to a far instruction, right? So if you look at, uh, this is the entire logic that deals with finding out which particular uh, path to take, right? So if you look at what is happening is um, the immediate field is providing uh, some value and that value is uh, communicated to an order here, which is taking the current PC, PC plus four. So let's say this is your PC, this is plus four. So at this moment, it is PC plus four. And what you are taking is you are also taking the constant which is provided. So, for example, in this case, let's say the jump is 48. So now at this moment, you have two different paths to select, whether to go to PC plus four path or to PC plus four plus, uh, let's say, uh, 48. Okay. And depending on this control signal, which will be triggered based on the condition, which is either true or false. Okay. And based on that, we will know which particular PC to take. Right. Once we uh, get the final PC, then uh, the instruction fetch uh, resumes as usual, as you have discussed previously. So these are the various control signals that, that you may uh, go through in detail if you are interested. I won't uh, uh, spell out each and everything in detail, but, but you can just uh, go through it for the uh, sake of uh, completion. So uh, this is a table format in which you can uh, correlate what control signal get activated uh, for a given uh, operation. So let, let's look at, uh, let's say the first five rows, right? So all of them are non-memory instructions, right? So you will find that there are, there are no control signals that deals with memory is active. Right? So you are not performing a memory read, you are not performing a memory write, or because you are not performing any read or write, you are not reading into the register, sorry, writing into the register from memory, right? So, but, but the moment you move to, let's say, load or store, then your control signal changes, right? So there is a load here, that means memory read, store meaning memory write. And if you are loading something, then you are loading into a register. So that's why memory to register is active, right? For all other uh, instructions, these, these things are, don't care uh, because uh, they have no meaning for these two kinds of instructions, right? Similarly, if you look at uh, the, the non-memory operations, because you are dealing with registers, you will find that the register destination and register write control signal is active all the time, right? So uh, 
the alu source is kind of uh, immaterial here uh, it, it uh, doesn't make any uh, difference but the moment you jump to load word or store word then because you provide an address in the instruction itself that can be added along with the register which will provide you the final address that's why these control signals get activated okay so to get a complete picture uh, we start with the instruction fetch here which is based on the content of pc pc becomes pc plus four okay then uh, we go to the decode stage where we look at the upper six bits which are the upcode based on that we decide what operations to perform depending on the kinds of instructions and uh, then we kind of decode the instruction find out the registers that, that we will be using and finally you know uh, extend the data if it is a di direct uh, immediate value which is provided in the instruction itself and then finally we propagate the data into the alu right so again here the alu source can be either you are getting a data from the instruction itself or from one of the registers right and depending on the upcode or the functionality field you are performing the execute operation so this is the execute stage if you are dealing with loads or stores this is where it will be so this is like a memory stage and if you are dealing with memory you will uh, read something from the memory and it eventually you will write it back right so we can call this as write back right and the another subtle point that we should not miss is depending on the branch outcome which at this moment we will know at the end of execute stage we will uh, select one of the pcs whether it will be pc plus four or pc plus four plus some x right that will be feed it to the pc again and then it continues right so this is the complete picture now at this moment we have understood the notion of single cycle where all the instructions are taking single cycle and as i have mentioned in the previous lecture the cycle length is determined by the longest possible data path which will be mostly memory because memory is not on chip right so so far so good but this is not a good design if you are thinking about performance because no matter whether you use memory or not your cycle time will be driven by the weakest link which is the memory instruction right so to take an example uh, so here i'm talking about an instruction which is a load which goes to memory let's assume uh, these are the various latencies for different stages okay so in total it takes around let's say eight nanoseconds to perform uh, this particular load that means my clock's cycle is one nanosecond so if i have to come up with a frequency it will become 125 megahertz right uh, now if i try to find out how many cycles i spend per instruction it's pretty simple it's one because we are dealing with single cycle cpu right but now the pertinent question is if i have an odd instruction instead of a load which doesn't use this memory then i'll be done with six nanoseconds so i'm actually wasting my two nanoseconds just because i have designed a single cycle cpu and that's why my cycle per instruction is one but my cycle time is longer it's not a small number right so in the next lecture we'll try to find out better ways to uh, deal with the single cycle cpu and before moving into the design issues we'll try to understand what exactly is the clock cycle time how does it affect the performance how do we compare to different designs with that thank you